Hey guys, it's David. In this video, I will answer the hotly debated theological question of foreknowledge and how that correlates to predestination. When I was a young believer, I learned that one of the attributes of God is that he's omniscient, meaning that he knows all things. And if he knows all things, that would include the future. And so I thought about this does God for knowing everything equal to God predestining everything? Or how could God for know everything without predestining everything? And for a while there, I couldn't get a satisfactory answer. So I leaned more towards the Calvinist side of things that God does indeed predestine everything. However, if God predestines everything, then that would include evil taking place on this earth. For example, does God predestine thousands of people dying in a natural disaster? Or even worse, does God predestine little children getting raped and murdered by sexual predators? These are the sorts of questions you have to wrestle with as a Calvinist in my opinion. And over the years, my perspective on this question has broadened. I'm no longer a Calvinist and I'm now ready to share my findings with you. Okay. Keep in mind, I'm not a philosopher, so I won't be tackling this subject from a, from a philosophical perspective. Instead, I will use one scripture passage and one illustration I heard to present my view. If you want the philosophical side of things, then I would recommend watching uh, William Lane Craig's videos on this matter. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so I don't think for knowledge necessitates predestination because of this one scripture passage, which I'm going to read to you now. Okay, it's first Samuel chapter 23 verses six to 14. And in this passage, young David had saved the city Keilah from the Philistines and is camping out in the city. And then Saul finds out that David is hiding out in that city. So he plans to go down and capture David. That's the context. Let's read the passage. When Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, had fled to David to Keilah, he had come down with an ephod in his hand. Now it was told Saul that David had come to Keilah. And Saul said, God has given him into my hand, for he has shut himself in by entering a town that has gates and bars. And Saul summoned all the people to war to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. David knew that Saul was plotting harm against him. And he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring me the ephod here. Then David said, O Lord, the God of Israel, your servant has surely heard that Saul seeks to come down to Keilah to destroy the city on my account. Will the men of Keilah surrender me into his hand? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O Lord, the God of Israel, please tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then David said, Will the men of Keilah surrender me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will surrender you. Then David and his men, who were about six hundred, arose and departed from Keilah. And they went wherever they could go. When Saul was told that David had escaped from Keilah, he gave up the expedition and David remained in the strongholds in the wilderness, in the hill country of the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God did not give him into his hand. What did David do as a result of hearing from God the news that Saul was coming for him? Did he say, oh well, that's fate. Uh, just gotta sit here and wait and die. No, he didn't do that. He did the next best thing and fled the city. As a result of him fleeing, none of those things that God told him would happen came to pass. So what are we to conclude from this story? Well, that God not only foreknows the actual future, but all possible futures. He knows every possibility that could take place in the timeline. So no, foreknowledge does not necessitate predestination. And a good illustration I heard is this. Imagine you were planning on watching a football game and you missed it, but you were able to ask your friend to record it for you. 
and in the meanwhile on your way home you hear the results of the match on the news and you learn what players scored and then once you get home you decide to watch the match already knowing the outcome so let's let's ask yourself this does you knowing what is going to happen take away the free will of the players during the game no your foreknowledge of things does not take away the free will of the players they still made free will decisions during the game and that's how i imagine it's with god god foreknows everything but that doesn't mean he has predestined everything he may have predestined certain things taking place but not everything okay and that's how we can deal with the question of does god cause evil no he does not because he has not predestined everything okay god's foreknowledge of future events does not infringe upon our free will does that make sense so with that in mind we can now answer some difficult questions like remember the story of genesis why did god place the tree in the garden to begin with if he foreknew that adam and eve would eat of it and disobey him did god predestine the fall of humanity to happen well i would answer no to that question but i've heard calvinists say yes god did predestine the fall of humanity which doesn't make sense to me so let's answer both questions in order first why did god place the tree there to begin with and the answer is very simple because god made us free will beings if there's no option to disobey god then there wouldn't be any free will but we'd be simply pre-programmed if all we could ever do is good and love and obey god then is that really love is that really free will no it's not there has to be the option to do evil to disobey in order for there to be free will make sense so god created us with free will and put the tree there as a sort of test he wants us to freely choose to obey and love him not out of compulsion but out of love he did not however intend the temptation to eat from the forbidden tree to be overwhelming only once the serpent beguiled eve did the temptation become too irresistible and you might ask why did god allow the serpent to tempt eve well just as humans have free will god's other creations like angels do too and the serpent might have been an angel a divine being the shining one you can see my video on that topic he has free will and he used that free will to choose evil to to rebel against god he was the original rebel and god didn't intervene because that would infringe upon humanity's free will he let it happen as a sort of test a test of faith which humanity failed but never fret god has consequently provided a way of salvation through his son a way for our relationship with him to be restored to the way it should have been before the fall so good news so yes god foreknew that adam and eve would disobey him and eat of the tree but he didn't predestine it taking place as we've discovered foreknowledge of things does not necessitate predestining those things to take place god also foreknew the future that would take place had adam and eve obeyed him which would have been a joint human and divine family co-ruling over the earth and by this i don't mean to imply that god didn't know what actual future would happen no he does obviously because he's god he but he not only foreknows the actual future he foreknows every possible future does that make sense he's that big so i hope i made sense in this video and i hope you got something out of it thank you for watching god bless bye bye